Morning Tower, speed with 72. Speed with 72 at O, continue 27 left, wind 220 degrees at 25, gusting 36. Continue 27 left, speed with 72. Delta is uh, 186, clear to land, 27 left. Go to 186, vacate on the greens, contact ground at 1-1 decimal 7. Speed at 7 2, runway 27 left, clear to land, sir. Hello there, and welcome to this PIC Aviation ATPL tutorial on polar stereographic grid navigation. So we have a question here that is basically stating that specific charts are commonly used by pilots operating on and around the North Pole. A route is flown from 85 degrees south, 100 degrees east, to 85 degrees south, 140 west. So first of all, I think the question has been a little bit unfair there in the sense that it's saying North Pole, but then it's actually referring to the South Pole. So I'm going to note the South Pole. I'm going to now note that we're on 85 degrees south. 100 degrees east and we're going to be flying to and we are going westerly I believe so I'm going to draw it a little bit further across 85 degrees south 140 degrees west because of that I can draw a nice little arrow and I don't know I could draw a little plane on there as well just to sort of help me see that I'm going in a westerly direction With the aid of a suitable diagram, determine both the grid track and the true track of the course at 180 degrees east-west. Your answer should state the name of the, tar the, sorry, the, char the chart type. Okay. Well, I'm also now going to have to draw our famous polar stereographic circle. I've noted that this is a polar stereographic chart as part of the answer. So I can note that this is... a polar stereographic I can also maybe underline that so that the examiner knows I'm very clear as to what kind of chart projection we're looking at and they're going to have to draw a diagram so I'll continue in black ink it's good to have a maybe multicolored pen for these just so you can make things nice and visually um, stimulating and clear to yourself. So you'll have to forgive my crude circular drawing. So there's my circle. What I'm now going to need is to work out where I'm going to draw my meridian. I'm told I have to reference to the true track of the course at 180 degrees east-west. So I will need to draw that in, but what I like to do with polar stereographics is first draw the South Pole, because we are in the South Pole. Because we're in the South Pole, we're going to have a line drawing towards the North Pole. To do that, best to get the ruler and just draw a North. So I can put the arrow to indicate the North Pole. We also have, and I will change colour now, the anti-meridian, 180 degrees east-west. We're going to draw that going the other way around the Earth, and that too is going to point towards the North Pole in this case. So I can put 180 degrees east-west, and I could probably, just for the sake of argument, put 000 degrees east-west. I'm also going to draw in the two lines of longitude. I'm going to be as accurate as I can. You know, it's difficult given the fact this isn't a perfect circle. But what I will do is, well, it's 100 degrees east, which is probably just a little bit over 90. So it looks something like that. I'm going to mark that as 100 degrees east. And then we're going to 140 degrees west, which is probably around this area here, isn't it? And it's always good to go beyond the circle as well. I'm going to label that 140 
degrees west. The next step will be to join these two points with our line that we're flying across. So we try and line that intersection and that intersection with a single line and again drawing well past just to make it nice and clear. So we can see there that nice green line going through. And in the exam you'd be expected to give a really detailed um, diagram such as this and it will continue to develop uh, to the extent where it should get full marks, should it be an exam question. Okay, so we can now begin to see maybe a bit of a geometry problem in front of us. So let's go to, first of all, think, right, it's good to get in our grid north. We've got the true north pointed to. Let's get the grid north in. We'll do that with a red pen. Well, grid north and true north are the same, so we can even maybe put maybe a little arrow there to remind us that from this point. Grid north from here will look something like that. From here will look something like that. We can maybe just put G dot north. G dot n for grid north. Maybe there as well. Can also say that this is an angle, this is an angle, and therefore this is an angle. And that will help us mathematically. This is going to be 100 degrees. This is going to be 140 degrees. And therefore, by simple um, addition, knowing that we have a circle 360 degrees, this angle here has to be 120 degrees. What we have here is also an isosceles triangle. So we can draw the International Convention there for the isosceles triangle. And then we can say, right, we can now work out this angle and this angle if this is an isosceles triangle. 120, well, the angle sum of a triangle equals 180 degrees. And therefore, 180 minus 120 is 60. And therefore, 60 divided by 2, because I've got two angles, equals 30 degrees. So these are both 30 degrees. What we also have here is a straight line. And I will draw that with a green pen. We have the straight line here. And so, in total, this angle will equal 180. We know there's 140. So we therefore know that this angle here is 140 plus the remaining 40 to get to 180. So we can say that that angle is 40 degrees. If that angle is 40 degrees and that angle is 30 degrees, what we can then say is 180 minus the sum of 30 and 40, which we know to be 70, equals 110 degrees. And therefore this angle here is one one zero degrees. So already now we're starting to see some nice clear patterns. So we know there the remaining angle is 110 degrees. Because the angle sum again of a straight line, we did it here, we're now going to do it here, is 180 degrees. We can work out this angle. And it's just going to be 70, isn't it, to get to 180 degrees. Because the angles on a straight line equal 180 degrees. So we have 110 and we have 70. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do now is measure the true track. To measure the true track, we measure it from true north. Where's true north? This will point to true north. Measuring clockwise from true north will give us the direction of this line on a westerly basis. So the aircraft is flying that way. Because of that, measuring clockwise from true north, it gives us that 70, which I'm going to highlight actually with a highlighter. 
to 70 degrees. And that's all True Track is. So by process of geometry, simple geometry, we can say the True Track from let's say 85 south, 140 west being um, our point A, sorry, 85 south, 100 degrees east, A, to point B, 85 degrees south, 140 west, the true track is 0, 070 degrees true. Remember, the convention, it's a line of longitude, so it's a longitude value, so you have to make sure that zero is there, it's not a latitude, and it's a true reference bearing and therefore we put the T at the end. We're not done though are we? We've now got to work out what the grid track is. Grid track is still unknown. Well, convergency is important on a polar stereographic and it's the difference between the data meridian and the local meridian at the point where the bearing's been measured. Well, we're measuring our data meridian is zero, zero, zero degrees. And the local meridian is at the 180 degrees east west. So the difference is just 180 degrees east and west. We've got to remember something very important. Convergency west. What is it? It's true track best. Remember these are key throughout the SEPL, you know. They're like things like Cadbury's Dairy Milk, very tasty and all that good stuff. Convergency east true track least. And this is great because this will serve as a gross error check later. Normally the direction of convergence is from grid north to true north at the local meridian. In this case, it's going to be 180 degrees east-west. Sorry, 180 degrees east or 180 degrees west. So the best way to work out is to refer to the diagram where it can be seen that by measuring the true, sorry, by measuring the track clockwise from grid north at the local meridian, grid track has to be greater than true track. We're measuring it here, the grid track has got to be greater than true track. It's going to be this value here, isn't it? Because that's the gross error check. We know it's got to be bigger than 70. So it's going to be 180 plus 70, or it's going to be 180 minus 70. Well, I've already helped us. I've measured and we've seen that it's going to be this value, this black line. That's the angle we're looking for. It won't quite be the same, but that's the angle because we're measuring from grid north. So by looking at that image there, we know it can't be 110 and therefore has to be 250 degrees grid and therefore we can say that the grid track is 250 degrees grid so the true track is 070 degrees true the grid track is 250 degrees grid and that would give us 10 out of 10 marks I do hope that's helped you all and has hopefully made things click. It's all in the diagram. The more done with the diagram, the more success you will have with being able to understand what's going on.